When we were on set, we were five feet, it was probably this far away from me. And I was talking to someone, they'd finished the shot, and someone on my team had said, Foxy's smoking. I was like, yeah, Foxy's smoking. And, was, and they're like, no, no, it's smoking. And I look back and I'm like, oh, it's smoking. The servo overheated and there was a little fire. Now, it did not burst into the flames. There was some smoke. There was some smoke. Hello? Welcome to Freddy's. Have you met them yet? Met who? I mean, the creature shop, that's what we do, is world building. These things have been sitting around for a long time, and you want to convey that. Like, the second you see it, you want it to read. Like, this thing's old, it's been around, it's falling apart. And that was, to me, was one of the, the f most exciting parts of the build, was the textures. Um, we spent a lot of time figuring out what fabric we were gonna cover them with, um, the saturation of the colors, how dirty they get. Even playing with like the soft surfaces and the hard surfaces, like Chica is a, a great example with her feathers on top and her beak and her bib and then the skin on her clothes. And it's all of that together and you have to look at them all as a whole because they're all gonna be on stage seen together. So they all have to complement each other um, as well as look great independently. Like the noses, for example, we went back and forth over textures and we finally landed on a, a rubber. If these were built in the 80s, what materials would they have used? That was kind of a thought process. In the 80s, kids went missing. The police searched Freddy's top to bottom. Hello? They never found them. It's all white fleece that we started with, and then we dyed them um, in-house to match the, the characters in the game. And we worked with Scott a lot to figure out, like Bonnie, for example, Everything that I saw in print and even in the game, he looks purple, but he's actually blue. It was uh, figuring out what looks best, but also the lore, making sure that we stay in the world. And then as you were saying earlier, like we had all the samples up on the board and we were putting them together and like really getting a sense of how the ensemble felt in terms of the color palette. Yeah, and getting like the weathered quality right was really like a trial and error process. We started slowly so that we could keep adding and adding, um, but not go too far either. And that was like such a fun process. And then getting it under the lights and in front of the camera and seeing how it was reading, and which was sometimes different than how it felt when we were standing in front of it. I mean, of course that's coming from the lore in the game, but I think for the movement, it brought this whole other layer too, where with the actual animatronic elements, we were leaning into the imperfections and we loved when it stuttered and we loved when things felt not quite right, because of course, nothing is quite right in Freddy's. There was a moment in the shop when we were building, I think it was Chica. The eyes. And we had some interference with the signal and the eyes started twitching. And we re recreated that yeah. actually. Uh, there's a moment uh, where there's a, I don't want to give anything away. Can we give anything away? Um, anyway, something happens to Chica and we wanted to replicate exactly what that like powered down eye, you know, um, role was because it was it was so phenomenal. Uh, again, a happy accident that we, we were able to recreate, which is cool. What do they want? They want to make her like them. Bobby! Tell me how to stop them. <laughs> Foxy in particular, his cylinders, you see all the cylinders. So we really wanted to be as accurate as we could, but also have that shiny um, look, but you know, make it dirty. The other animatronics, they're full. There's no holes or they're not deteriorated. Whereas Foxy is fully deteriorated where you see through him, you see through his arms, through his chest. So to put an actor in a green suit in a costume and then remove it all would be very cost prohibitive to have a full puppet, full animatronic on set. You get it all in camera, you get to see through it. So I think trying to stand him up on two legs and have him walking around, that was kind of the, the biggest challenge. Yeah, yeah, the physics of getting Foxy able to move around in a physical space is, uh, is challenging. <laughs> and was it Foxy the one that physically lit on fire on set? That's the big rumor. <laughs> Walk me through that. Tell when me. we were on set, we were five feet, it was probably this far away from him. And I was talking to someone, they'd finished the shot, 
and someone on my team and said, Foxy's smoking. I was like, yeah, Foxy's smoking. And, and they're like, no, no, it's smoking. And I look back and I'm like, oh, it's smoking. The servo overheated and there was a little fire. Now, it did not burst into the flames. There was some smoke. There was some smoke. That had only ever happened once before the servo overheating at the shop. Right. It's not totally terrifying and you just lose time. And so that was good that we had like a trial run to go off of on that. But it could have happened all the time and only happened once on production. That was amazing. It was a testament to you guys.